Hello, this is Jeremy Myers once again with a little tutorial video. This time we're going to show you how to do some editing and uh, proofreading on a PDF document that gets sent to you by email or that you download off the internet. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm starting a little publishing company and one of the uh, things I'm going to be doing with this publishing company is using something called beta readers. It's a little invention of mine to kind of crowdsource the editorial process. Hopefully that brings down the expense of publishing which therefore uh, allows the books to be cheaper and uh, more importantly allows us to pay higher royalties to our authors and uh, if we can uh, bring down the costs in various ways of publishing then uh, we should be able to both reduce the price of the books and drastically increase how much we pay the authors who print and publish their books through us. So uh, the first thing, uh, this, this guide then is for the beta readers so that uh, when they receive the PDF documents in email or uh, download them off the internet uh, with a link that I provide to them, they can uh, proofread and edit these documents and uh, send the corrections back to me, the suggested corrections back to me and to our editorial team uh, so that we can then correct the manuscripts for publication. So the very first thing to do when you are preparing to proofread a document that is sent to you of course is download Adobe Reader. Uh, you can get version 10 or the newest version is version 11 and you see up here that uh, you can get it from adobe.com forward slash products forward slash reader dot html and of course it's free 100 percent absolutely free you have some other things over here you can buy of course but uh, that's not necessary just um, get this and uh, the free version and that will work for you once you have that, you can go ahead and open up the document that I send to you. And when you do, it will look something like this. So this is an email that I sent out to the people on my free email newsletter, the Till He Comes newsletter. Uh, this was the May 2013 newsletter and uh, this is the newsletter that I send out all of my free books to so if you happen to watch this video and you aren't on my newsletter and you want to get free books about scripture theology Bible study things like that uh, you can go to tillycomes.org and subscribe to get the free newsletter there but uh, what I did in this newsletter is um, I sent out a newsletter with many many typos in it and uh, I asked the people who wanted to become a beta reader to try to find the typos in this email. And so uh, here in the course of this little video, I'm going to show you how to uh, point out mistakes and grammatical errors, typographical errors in a PDF document that is sent to you by email or downloaded. So the first thing, as I said, is to download Adobe Reader. Once you have it open, once you have the document open, as I do here, what you're going to want to do is notice that you have two little buttons up here. One for commenting, or adding a sticky note, and one for highlighting text. Alright, those are the two things you're going to want to do. So as you're reading through, you can read, 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 and you're reading through, and the first thing you do is notice a typo. Um, people who subscribe to this newsletter and their publishing plans. There is the wrong kind of there. So what I'm going to do is highlight it and uh, you know go up here and collect, select highlight text. I could have done it the other way also. Alright, if let's say I hadn't highlighted it and I clicked this first. Now I have kind of a highlighter. Okay, and when I highlight that it automatically highlights. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to add a note here or a comment about what it should be. So I'm going to go over here and open the comment panel. Now that I've clicked that comment button, this will just stay open. And I'm going to come over here and here's the highlighted text. It has my name on there on who made the correction, who made the highlight. And I'm going to double click down here and just type in a little note that says this should be there. Uh, T-H-E-I-R. Okay, and uh, that's it. So, and you see over here it adds this little teeny bubble and if I uh, 
hover my my uh, cursor over that bubble it tells me what the correction should be all right so as we continue reading we go around we see I ran a survey uh, back in uh, it was probably March or April about people who wanted to get published and here's some of the results of that survey and um, I have a few other things about it and then down here is the next typographical error uh, up to 45 percent right so uh, that's how much we're, we're looking to pay some of our authors I, I feel like authors they do most of the work when they do the publishing the book a book is their baby I know I've, I've written several myself and it would be nice most uh, royalty payments in the publishing industry right now are right around 10 percent uh, with our model that we're working on we are going to be offering a royalty payment to authors of up to 45 percent so um, anyway we figure that's pretty generous but the point is is look up here up here we have 81 percent and we have the symbol 70 percent and the symbol 74 percent and the symbol down here though we spelled out percent it's not exactly exactly wrong but in the publishing world you want to be consistent so once you pick a pattern or a way of doing things it's most helpful to um, be consistent in the type of symbols and lettering and spacing and capitalization punctuation those sorts of things so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that and over here you notice another thing pops up I'm going to highlight that and say this should be I'm going to put percent instead of percent to let's say for consistency with the bulleted list above right and you see the little note goes in there just like that now I could have um, I'm gonna undo that and show you a different way of doing this let's say I was coming along here and I wanted to put just the sticky note there instead just make a little note I could have done that I would go up there and click the sticky note button I'm gonna come down here and kinda of highlight it there and now I can add this and say this should be percent instead of percent to be consistent with the bulleted list above see how that works and then if I just click off it goes away and I can drag and drop this so it's over there or you know put it up here or something um, either way it kinda uh, puts it in a note there and maybe as an editor as a beta reader I'm not sure exactly what the author meant I'm not sure that it's an error but I noticed something that could be an error and maybe that would be a way for you to put a comment like that in there so those are basically the two ways of doing uh, edits to a PDF manuscript like this and uh, you can either highlight it and then add a little note in the box or you can just flat out add the the sticky note like that and either way it puts it over here and over here you see some are highlighted text and some are sticky notes so just going through this I guess I could point out a few others that um, here's one for example sounds too good to be true that of course should be two you see from my in my opinion this is the little quicker way of doing it rather than the sticky notes highlighting the text and then it automatically you can add a note to it as well I think that's a little bit quicker and a little bit better and maybe you noticed over here another mistake oh look up here there's all sorts of other things too um, you can insert text you can delete text uh, or replace text you can strike through as in uh, take rid of, get rid of underline um, add node all sorts of other little things you can do here but for the most part with what we'll be asking our beta readers to do these two buttons are going to be enough so I'm gonna highlight that and uh, notice it was up above this one and so it's going in there and uh, that one should be with a single um, what are those things called uh, <laughs> I was gonna call it a comma but that's not right quote mark a single quote rather than a double quote so um, sounds too good to be true let's see so we're going on I would hate for you to publish your books that is a typo this should be your yep Oop. okay 
And uh, going on, down here on this bulleted list, you see I have these do not have the periods afterwards, but beta readers does. So I'm just going to highlight that. I don't know, I could use some of these others up here. Look, if you're a, if you're a beta reader and you want to um, insert text or add note to replace text or something like that, you could do that. I really don't care as long as uh, you're pointing out. Uh, this should say no period after this first item, you know, to be consistent with rest of numbered list. And look, so if, you, if you're reading along as a beta reader and uh, you see something that's out of place or doesn't seem quite right, as I was sending this out, I got lots of people who wrote in to me who said that the bold text here and up here is, uh, looks strange. I also got lots of people who said that my capitalization here is strange. I agree with all of those. This was an email though. And so in an email, often uh, you can capitalize text and bold text to make points. In a book, of course, you wouldn't want to really do either of those. Uh, you never, ever, ever want capitalized text like this in a book. And uh, you wouldn't want bolded text like this in a book either, unless it is a heading or subheading. Um, usually, if you're wanting to emphasize something in a book, you are only going to uh, put it in italics. You don't want to underline uh, things in a book either. Again, unless it's maybe a heading or a subheading. All right, here's another mistake. Grammatical, obviously. Do that. Grammatical, should be grammatical. Yep. And uh, notice this. Very, very, very few people caught this. I think there was only one. All the way throughout this email, I have been capitalizing beta reader, beta reader. See down here, beta reader. Up here, beta reader. All right. Here, I did not capitalize either. For consistency, should be capitalized. Oh, beta reader. Keep consistent. Okay. And let's see. There's a, sub a couple of others. Here's one. Involvement. Tricky little E in there. I don't know if uh, I have some uh, overseas readers. I don't know if maybe this is an English spelling or not. I don't know. Um, oh, wait. No, that is spelled correctly. Um, it was uh, initially in one of my previous emails, it was smelt, spelled uh, incorrectly. That's I was looking at one of those others. So uh, we're going to undo that. Undo. It looked correct to me, but then on my paper here it was spelled incorrect. And now I'm comparing the two, and um, oh wait, now it is. I'm at looking at the wrong one. There it is. There's the mistake. Um, so this is. There's the one. I knew it was on there. Involvement. All right, and a few more here again. Some people did catch this, some people didn't. Email is one of those words you can spell different ways. And uh, in this email, I have been spelling it. Let's see if I can go up and find a spot. Here we go. Email uh, without the dash. So uh, just for consistency, we want to do that. Email, we're going to highlight that text. We are going to say, whoop, missed it. That's weird. There we go. Email. No dash for consistency. All right. And then a few more down here. I'm going to highlight that. Should be R. And this is the wrong then. then. All right. Now, those are the errors that I purposefully put in this document. There were, of course, several others which other people found, and maybe as you were reading through it, you found several as well. But I hope this little guide helps you understand how to use Adobe Reader to proofread and edit a document that I sent to you as one of our beta readers 
for uh, the publishing company that we will be putting books out for. Thank you very much. See you later.